Hello there, YouTubers, and welcome to another episode of Dr. Cassette's Workshop. Today we are going to build a microphone with built-in microphone preamplifier. Now what we have right here is the base for our project. This is a very, very cheap, it's actually the, the most cheap and terrible microphone in my whole huge collection of microphones. It's a Vivanco DM10. and Right after I got this thing, I had to send it in because it was buzzing. And now it's buzzing again, so this really is a fail. And um, also the body of the microphone isn't in the best condition. So you can see it has all these lines around it. And that is, what happened here is uh, the same thing that Clydeside described in one of his videos. The cable had a chemical reaction with the body of the microphone going on and the cable actually melted the plastic of the microphone body because I had the cable just um, wound around the microphone's body to keep it organized. Here we have the preamplifier that we are going to use. This is a nice and simple two transistor preamplifier. It uses two, let's see, two BC 548C transistors and just yesterday I rearranged some of the components on the circuit board. just found this part here, the circuit board, that I was able to cut off when I was done. So there was about the same amount of circuit board also on this side. So um, yeah, I really did some downsizing there. But of course this strip board, if you're, if you're creative enough, you can really make very, very small circuits on, these, uh, on this strip board. Uh, for all of you who are interested, and I guess there will be quite a few, this is the circuit that I used. And uh, just notice uh, there are no values given in this circuit. Um, do have the, that's the web address right there. Of course it's all in German, but uh, it's pretty much self-explaining, I guess the uh, parts list for this uh, circuit right here is down there, of course. And uh, it does say that you are that you should use two different transistors, I think. Yeah, one is the 549 and one is 548. But I found out that uh, the 548 works just fine, so there's no big deal. So, anyway, now we're going to go ahead and put this thing into that thing, and in order to do that, I first have to take this whole thing apart. I've taken apart the upper part of the microphone. That's the actual microphone element that they've used. I've unsoldered that thing. And uh, here is the remaining part, and as you can see, they've stuffed some kind of, uh, I don't know, kind of like gypsum and cement or something that's in there. I don't know what that is, but uh, that has to come out. Well, I finally managed to get the stupid thing out of the microphone body. Um, this really is some kind of uh, stone-like material, and it actually does make sense. It's not only to you know, to make the microphone feel heavier so that people think it's higher quality. What this does, if it's really jammed into there and glued on like it was, it uh, prevents the, um, the plastic housing from vibrating. Because, of course, every vibration and touching the microphone is already enough, uh, is going to be picked up by the microphone. So, it does make sense, but of course, since we're going to fit the amplifier into there, we're not going to use this thing anymore. And... Uh, yeah, I first tried to kind of drill into it from the top and to pull it out, but that didn't work. Finally, I had the great idea to pull out the cord from, from the underside and then hammer it out from the underside. But uh, anyway, that's that. And here we have all the parts that we are going to need. So now we can start putting this all back together. Now, um, I decided not to use the on and off switch anymore. For one thing, there's probably 
not enough space in there for everything. And the other thing is, you know, I could use this to cut off the power to the to the little preamplifier and use it as an on and off switch, but I don't really need a feature like that, so well, we are going to do it without the switch. It's a little bit later now. So you can see I have some new wires hooked up to the microphone element because the old ones were broken. And I have the this rubber part back in the body of the microphone and I have this cable installed. And this is a, as you can see, audio cable left channel, right channel, and ground. But it's hooked up to a DIN jack in a rather weird way. I don't know where that came from. I think off of a record player. Uh, the pin in the center is the ground, and then the two pins on this side are hooked up to the one channel, and the two pins on the other side are hooked up to the other channel. It's a very weird setup, and uh, I don't know. But uh, this is uh, going to be quite handy to hook up the um, preamplifier to uh, to the power supply and to uh, well to the next amplifier stage and here we have the microphone all wired up I have the microphone hooked up on the one end of the amplifier and on the other end I have the cable hooked up that's of course running through the body of the microphone. Here is the DIN plug. I have made some marks to see where the signal goes. And now I can put this all to back together and then we can try it out. And here we have the microphone with built-in preamplifier all put together. Now what I did was I wrapped some of this uh, kitchen paper around the circuit and stuffed it all into there so the circuit inside of there doesn't rattle as you can hear. So um, you can kind of see it through there. There's the kitchen paper inside of there. Um, what I've done then is uh, I've built this uh, funny looking adapter. We have the DIN jack on the one end side and we have a pair of RCA jacks on the other side and these pins. And I can hook up the 12 volts the preamplifier needs. Well I can actually go uh, as low as 6 volts. I've tested that. Um, but it's rated for 12 volts so um, I can hook that up right there that's of course the audio output and that's where everything from the microphone comes in that's the underside this is looking kinda of messy I've basically I don't know for whatever reason I've once soldered this uh, DIN jack which came out of a Siemens cassette deck by the way I've soldered that to the circuit board and that has been lying around for years and I've now actually finally had a opportunity to use it so that's the adapter and that of course plugs into there and now we can finally go ahead and try it out. Alright, I'm now speaking using the homemade amplified microphone. I have it all hooked up to this homemade amplifier right here. That is sending the signal out to that big speaker up there and down here I have the uh, signal and power adapter signal of course goes into the amplifier and power comes from this adjustable uh, power supply down here uh, have it set to 12 volts it, uh, the ampere meter on this thing is not very accurate at all it may take well, two to five milliampere's that might be um, anyway it doesn't really matter um, Unfortunately, we are getting a little bit of a hum in the background. You can probably hear that. If I turn up the volume. Oh, <laughs> that's too much. Um, anyway, at first I thought it was a lot worse because I had my soldering iron turned on. And that silly thing uh, really... <laughs> it really... Uh, 
disturbs all kinds of audio equipment. I can just quickly turn that on so you can hear. And there goes that. <laughs> I was kind of shocked because uh, I didn't expect that much noise to be in the whole circuit. But uh, anyway, it's not all too bad. So I'm quite satisfied with the result. So that's all that's really left to say. Hope you've enjoyed this video and see you again soon with another episode of Dr. Cassette's Workshop. Yeah.